Hey family, hey hey, it is your girl Tavan Sakaichu of God's Heart, our mission. Welcome to today's teaching. I hope that you are well and enjoying the holidays, right? Um, yeah, our little ones are enjoying still the holidays and they are quite lengthy as they are opening like mid Jan, but not complaining. Thank you, Lord, for the time that we have with our children and our loved ones in Jesus' name. So we are still all about the fasting. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome to God's Heart Mission. And if you have um, become part of the community here, we're simply just about the will of the Father. We're about the business of the Father. That's all we do. And with the fame thing, yeah, it, it, it's hot, fam. It's, it's cooking where I'm at. We are in our 30s, 33 degrees, you know, Celsius. So it's very, very hot. <laughs> Um, but then, um, nonetheless, you know, welcome to our brothers and sisters who recently joined God's Heart Mission across all our social media platforms. That being TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, as well as YouTube. You are loved, you are cherished, and you are such a blessing um, to us as well. And again, thank you uh, for your prayers, everybody that's just been um, running behind the ministry. We appreciate it. It's heartfelt. And um, just know that we, we keep you in prayer as well, right? Because... We are here to build each other up in the faith, right? And to lift each other up unto the Lord so that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So if you are joining us for the first time, just a quick recap. We are on day, today is the 27th, and we are on day six of our fasting. It's going to end on the 2nd of January, 2024, and we commence on the 22nd of December, 2023. And there are key prayer points that we are lifting unto the Lord for the coming year. That's pretty much what the fast is about. Um, so yesterday I did share some verses and passages of scriptures that the Lord led me to for us to pray on or to ponder on, to meditate on. Please allow for the spirit of God to lead you about protection, um, from all sorts of evil, physical, emotional, spiritual, otherwise, even for our families, for our nations, cities, countries, um, the nations of the world. And today we are going to pray about, oh, that was the other day on the, yes, that's right. Yes, that was <laughs> yesterday, today. Um, we are we we're praying about God's blessings and favor in all on our, on all areas of our lives, business, family, social, community, um, global, etc. And I'm gonna be sharing today about tomorrow's passage of scriptures, which speak to um, tapping into God's strength so that we are able to overcome any challenges that we may be facing in the coming year. So we're gonna remind ourselves about the Lord whom we serve. And uh, who says we can do all things through Christ Jesus, the Lord and Savior of our lives. Um, yeah, that is the word of the Lord. So I'm going to first commence with prayer. I will jump on to, I think there's a word that the Lord dropped in my spirit, just as a form of encouragement. And then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get into it. Okay. So let us just pray. Please just stand by faith with me, wherever you may be. And as you tune in, please let me know who you are. Just say hello, because Facebook doesn't tell you. Um, and then I'll be quick to respond, but welcome to today's teaching. Okay, so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. This is the day you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad. And that Heavenly Father, may I speak only that which is from you, directly from your throne. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place. I pray a covering, Lord God, over each and every person that will be listening now, live, or even later on, Lord. May they be blessed and ministered to. Heavenly Father, thank you that. Um, you gave Christ Jesus, your only begotten son, to be the ultimate sacrifice, to pay the ultimate price, Heavenly Father, so that we may obtain the forgiveness of sin and have an inheritance in your kingdom as we are co-heirs of Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we can boldly enter the throne of grace with confidence in the finished work of the cross to make our petitions, prayers, and requests known unto you with thanksgiving in our hearts and supplication. Teach us your ways, Christ Jesus. Bring into remembrance that which you've taught us from the beginning of time. So we thank you, Lord, for just who you are. We thank you for your mercy, for your compassion, for your love, which is everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting. We pray for our children as well, Lord, for the coming year, that you continue, Heavenly Father, to guide them, to lead them. May they be blessed in their comings and goings. May they always be on top, never at the bottom. And we pray for your um, wall of protection, Heavenly Father, by fire, for you are a consuming fire, that they be protected from any external influences which are satanic, which is not of you, doctrines of demons, Heavenly Father, and cultural uh, standards which are not of you. Um, so help us also as parents, Lord God, as we're spending this special time with them for the holidays especially, that we, we teach them, you know, the things of the Lord, your precepts, commands, statutes, and decrees, as you've... Um, 
ordered us heavenly father to train our children in the way they should go so that when they are older they may not depart from it but help us lord god strengthen us um those whom you've entrusted to be overseers with your precious cargo um for we know that the inheritance of heaven the inheritance of the kingdom of god is theirs and that the kingdom of god belongs to them so help us lord god so that we are able to to minister to their hearts that you can use us um, as your light in their lives, Lord God. So may they be receptive, may they um, partake in the things of the Lord. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, for their precious gift and reward directly from heaven. But help us also as parents to speak as you lead us, as you guide us, so that we are able to um, nurture them and, and raise them up in the Lord, teaching them all things about who you are, Lord God. And I pray all of this in the mighty and much this name of jesus the author and finisher of our faith in jesus name we pray can i get an amen amen fam so welcome to today's teaching fam don't mind the fanny eh? i am literally cooking okay cool so the word today we are going to be jumping on a couple of scriptures that speak to the strength of the lord and that's how we're flowing that is for tomorrow so if you were um hi mr kelter hello my brother how are you oh my goodness so great um that you have joined us yes 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 tuning in on time today but you know how the lord operates here mr kelter we had a set time from seven to eight but the holy spirit has me jumping <laughs> but you know you know how we do here <laughs> You know how we do here. Oh my goodness, my brother. Like I tell you, you know, the Lord just does what, what he wants, right? Um, but nonetheless, it's so good. I'm so blessed that you could tune in and become a, a part of the teachings. I know you're super busy, work, etc. etc. But I trust that you've also had a or you are having such a blessed, you know, a festive season, you know, especially that we're celebrating Christ and we are getting ready for the new year, which is in the days to come. Um, welcome, my brother. All right, so Opening up on Psalm 67, we're going to take a moment and just give God the praise that he so deserves. Um, my heading on my NIV, the Bible says, let the nations praise God, not a nation, the nations, right? Because the Bible says that every nation shall bow and confess to God. So we're going to take a moment to just give him the praise. And the, the Psalms is a very short Psalm. So from one to seven, I'm going to read it. And then I'm going to jump on the passages of scripture that the Lord has led me to in terms of um praying for his strength for the coming year not only for ourselves for our spouses for those of us who are in um committed relationships for our wives husbands children um community members those whom we're involved with outside of um our our immediate family circle you know and at work in organizations everywhere you know so we're gonna pray for the strength of the lord for 2024 but let's first jump in and give the lord his so his praise that he so much deserves um, Psalm 67 reads, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O Lord. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples the peoples praise you then the land will yield its harvest and god our god will bless us god will bless us and the ends of the earth will fear him yes lord he is worthy of our praise all the glory belongs to him he is jehovah his name is yahweh he is the alpha and the omega he knows the end from the beginning and um, that is whom the lord whom we serve and he is unchanging all right cool so a couple of scriptures that the lord may, led me to when we take a moment to reflect and allow for the Holy Spirit to minister to us and to grant us revelation in terms of the strength that is in the Lord for you and me and those who are in Christ Jesus this is your portion this is your portion so there are moments we've had I'm sure many of us during 2023 even the previous years when we just like we can't anymore Lord like I've, I've reached my limit beyond this point I can't anymore but the Lord reminds us to tap into him he is our source of everything if all that you have is the Lord then you've got everything that you need that is what the book of John actually says and the beauty that I love about um, God's word is that it has the power to restore you know, because, you know, when you are so sapped of energy and strength, you can easily just lose hope and feel like and be in a position of despair, like there is no way out. This is the end of me. There is no better tomorrow. But we are told that in God, we should rest our hope. So this passage of scripture is going to remind us to direct, you know, our concerns to the one <laughs> who is our source 
of strength number one source of everything that we do outside of god we can do nothing so i'm here to just use the word of god to uplift us spiritually to refresh us spiritually right and give us the stamina and courage especially to carry on and also to enter 2024 strong we're not gonna come out here 2023 looking like what we've been through we're gonna come out here and enter into 2024 looking like the lord who serves us we're gonna allow for his strength to come through and to also restore us right and have us anchored so i hope these passages of scriptures that the lord has led me to will continue to serve really as a source of encouragement and support for you as you boldly and with the confidence that we have in the finished work of the cross, enter into 2024. Because you know who's already there, right? And we know who, who, what he's about. So that is where we're going to pull our encouragement and know that we have the support. The chief cornerstone has the days of our lives in his hand. And his will will prevail over my life and yours. And that's how we're moving in 2024. A quick reminder, number one, the first point that I want to remind you and me about the God whom you serve. You know, we have to know that his strength is our defense. So God is my strength and defense. You say it, you speak it. I hope you have your notepads, fam. So just jot down as I move on because I'm going to say the point and then I'm going to pull up the scripture that backs it up. God is my strength and defense. You speak it, you, 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 you appropriate it by faith and you stand on it and you act upon it. We are going to be doers of the word. That's one thing we're going to be sitting on for next year, doing the word, putting everything into practice as God has taught us. Exodus 15, 1, 4 says, Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him my father's god and i will exalt him the lord is a warrior the lord is his name pharaoh's chariot and his army he has hurled into the sea the best of pharaoh's officers are drowned in the red sea so we know for over 400 years the israelites were enslaved in egypt right and in a profound display of the lord's power undisputed unsurpassed pardon about that them, unsurpassed and uncontested we witness the profound display of the lord's power as he has them delivered by one man who had a spokesperson that one man is moses and his spokesperson was aaron and we all are familiar with that passage of scripture but basically this speaks to and highlights you know god's plan to rescue his people because the first thing he said to moses was i have heard the cries of my people and then he assigned him on the mission through the burning bush to say that you go and tell Pharaoh to release my people. And we know Pharaoh being Pharaoh, right? We know our Pharaohs in, the, in our lives. It didn't end there. <laughs> you know, Pharaoh being Pharaoh was like, not going to happen. You know, I will continue to do what I want to do. But we, at the end of the day, God had his will prevail. But the Israelites, you and me, in situations we have Pharaohs who are like blocking the, 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 the will of the Father from happening in our lives or trying to frustrate the plans of God or trying to do whatever it is that is coming from a demonic perspective, God still has his will prevail. But the key is for us to remain anchored and to know who he is, that he is our strength. He is our defender, right? He is our defend. The God whom we serve is a warrior. The Lord is his name. So regardless of the Pharaoh that you're going to be facing in 2024, forget the one in 2023. We're in the business of forgetting the former things, lest we forget. So what happened yesterday, we're gone. We're moving and we're keeping in step with the Holy Spirit. So there will be Pharaohs in 2024. But what does the Bible say? The God is your defense. The God is your warrior. The God is the one, the God whom we serve is the one that's going to defend you, fight for you. We, we just need to be still. We just need to be still and, and, and attach our faith with the Lord and align our thoughts with his and our actions, right? So you don't say God is your strength and God is your warrior and you partake in the battle. We're going to be led by the spirit. We're going to be led by the spirit, right? God is the one who has the might, <laughs> right? Who has the power, who has the authority and it is by his spirit. So I'd like to encourage you to find your security in him right and know that you are protected by him as your defender absolute uncontested 
unrivaled. God has no match. He has nobody that can try, try and take him on. And we need to appropriate that and understand that the God whom we serve, we are already victorious in him. And in him, we are more than conquerors. So if, if, if God is for us, then who can be against us, right? So I'd like to remind you, my brother or sister, that the God whom you serve, he is your strength and your defense. So at any sign of anybody coming for you, or Satan trying to sap your strength or whatever it is that looks like for you. Go back and remind yourself how you pulled the Israelites. 400 years is a long time. I'm sure Pharaoh, that Pharaoh was like, I've got these people for a lifetime and multiple lifetimes. But no, he did not. Because <laughs> that's not the will of the Father. God heard your cry as he did those of the Israelites. And God is our deliverer. He is the one that has a rescue plan. And he is the one that will make an escape for you. He will do it supernaturally. He will have people do it on his behalf. God, he will do what God wants to do. He does what pleases him. So take heart and don't be discouraged. Even if the red, the red, the red sea is staring, right, staring at you right in your face, know that he makes ways in places right, that you would least expect him to because he is God. God is God. And number two, the Bible reminds us that the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We, we're going to remain joyous. It's a conscious decision that you make to be like, today, this is the day that the Lord has made. God taught me to start my prayer like that. This is the day you declare it, you decree it by faith. This is the day that the Lord, because you ain't lying. God creates each and every day anew. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Why? It's made by the Lord and we remain in the presence of the Lord. And the Bible teaches us that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness, not half of it, not partial, fullness of joy. So it's a, we are aligning your thought already and you are setting the tone for the day and taking charge in the spiritual environment to say that this is the day. This is what the word says. So I appropriate it by faith and I'm going to act on it. The day the Lord has made. And I'm gonna be glad and 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 um I will be glad and be joyous in it. So the Lord, oh sorry, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the first point we mentioned was that the God whom we serve is our strength and defense. Now we say his joy, not happiness, his joy, which is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, is my strength and yours. Nehemiah 8:10 says, Go and enjoy. Okay, it says Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy trace food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared this day is holy to our lord do not grieve for the joy of the lord is your strength yes there are things that are going to come and try and steal our joy there are things that are going to come and try to steal our joy but what do we say we tell ourselves that we're not going to be grieved we're not going to be depressed we're not going to come out here miserable because the joy of the lord is our strength god's joy is not um, affected by external circumstances. It's an eternal gift. When he says for us to bear gifts which are everlasting, he speaks to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's not a temporary high because Tabang, you know, she's bought herself a pair of shoes. Now she, she's a high for that moment because she's excited about the shoes. Come she wakes up tomorrow, she starts thinking, I should not have spent that 400 rand on that shoe because now I gotta figure out petrol. I'm not talking about that. Okay, I don't really do that, fair, but you, you catch what I'm saying. It's not a temporary high. It's it's a joyous thing. It's a joyous uh, uh, moment which is derived or can only be sourced or gained through the Holy Spirit. So the Bible tells us not to grieve for the joy of the Lord is our strength. So whatever it is that you are facing right now, it doesn't matter what it looks like. We look unto the Lord. We tap into the Holy Spirit because he has fruits which are everlasting, which will sustain us. Because imagine, you know how... Being in a moment of feeling depressed or saddened or tired or exhausted or just downright demotivated, how much of your energy gets sapped just by that thought entering your mind and immediately your whole body responds. If you're going to wake up already feeling like this is going to be a bad day, your whole body is going to say, yes, it is going to be a bad day. But when you wake up before you even put your foot on that floor, 
you, you you decree the word of God. You literally take charge of those 24 hours because it is his will for us to remain in his joy, regardless of what we may, we may be facing. So everything that is in the Bible is the will of the Father for my life and yours. But let us not sell ourselves short by allowing the devil or even ourselves and our thoughts to be running wild with us, taking us from pillar to post when we know that we ought to stand on the word, which will sustain us, which will grant us every single promise that the God of glory has already spoken over my life and yours. These are his promises for you and me as we are co-heirs in Christ Jesus. So we take our power back and we tap into the strength of the Lord and we are going to be joyous. Regardless of what's going on around us, it's a decision that you and I are going to make and we're going to pray because the Holy Spirit will help us access that joy. We're doing nothing outside of the Spirit of God being a part of it. Third point the Lord led me to was a reminder that he is our refuge. God is my refuge and he is your refuge. Psalm 46, 1, 3 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. We will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though it, its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. So it's important sometimes to take a moment or two to ponder on the past victories that the God of glory has given you. Write them down. Meditate on them. That's the quickest way. If you visit the past, visit the past by remembering the victories that the God of glory has granted you by his special grace. And know that although you might be facing trouble, maybe at the current moment, this is now in 2024, remind yourself of how he pulled you through in 2023 and pull strength from there. So that you are able to remind yourself that as much as he put me through in that difficult situation experience, whenever that time was, I know that he will do it again because his word does not change. God is not a man. He doesn't change his mind. He is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. God is always at work and we can trust him. Even if everything around us is crumbling down, he is immovable. So because he is immovable and we are forever choosing to be in his presence, we are also immovable because in him we move and in him we have our being. So if his being is immovable, we are also going to remain immovable. So we are going to put the word of God into action and we're going to be intentional about it. When he says he's our refuge, there is no backup plan. He is the backup plan. He's plan A to Z, and that's how we are moving in 2024. So that we don't open doors and allow for channels to be opened for the enemy to access coming into our lives to wreak havoc. No, we keep him where he belongs, which is outside of our lives. And in check, because he has to know that the fire of God and his angels encamp around his children. Satan needs to know his position, and we are going to make sure that he's reminded of it. Every time he jumps stupid, he will catch flames. That's how we are moving in 2024, because we know the God whom we serve. And already Christ Jesus has defeated the foe. So we, he's got nothing on us. So he is going to be kept in check, and we're going to keep him there. And we are going to be about the business of the Father. Point number four. We ought to remind ourselves that the Lord, or we can strengthen ourselves, according to the Lord's word. I always say, remain in, in fellowship with the Holy Spirit by meditating and studying the word of God. Read out loud. You know, I read verses out loud. I look mad. <laughs> like I'm talking to myself, but I don't mind. Or listen to an audio Bible, you know, as you are driving or doing dishes, whatever you may be doing. Let us invite the presence of God. Let us, in, let us do this life, you know, have companionship with the Holy Spirit consistently, forever in the presence of of God. It doesn't matter what time it is, even if there's nothing particularly um, uh, specific in your heart to pray about. We pray without ceasing, you know, and even reading the Bible is a form of prayer. We fellowship with the Holy Spirit and we remind ourselves of what the Word of God says, which will then strengthen our spirit. It will refresh us. It will um, grant us the peace that we need, the comfort that we need. The Word of God is very comforting. Let me tell you, especially mentally, the Word of God is very, very comforting. Psalm 119, 28 says, My soul is weary with sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. But you got to set the time aside intentionally to sit on the word of God and allow for him to speak to you. Allow for him to speak to you as you fellowship with his Holy Spirit. To remind you that you can trust in God, right? 
so that we are able to make wise and righteous decisions and moves in accordance with the good works that he has um, for us to do in 2024. So strengthen yourself in accordance to the word of God. There will be time when your soul will be downcast. Yes, I'm not saying that's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie and promise you that there won't be trials and tribulations. That comes standard. Persecution, rejection, hatred, standard, you know. Um, it comes standard with those who are in the Lord, but we know that Christ has already overcome the world, right? So although you, at that point you might feel like, oh my good Lord, I can't anymore, He is your strength. And we are going to strengthen ourselves in accordance to his word. So you're going to pray that already into 2024. Lord, remind us to strengthen ourselves in accordance to your word, as Psalm 119, 28 says. Point number five, let us remind ourselves, moving into 2024, that the Lord is our strong tower. Is our strong tower. Proverbs 18, 10 says, the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The name that's above all names. Thank you, Jesus. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Not only is it a shield, but it is a fortified tower. And the righteous, those who've been made right in Christ, run to it and are safe. So we're not going to be looking at weird places for security, you know, that our forefathers did. No, 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 no. We're not going to trust in our riches. We're not going to trust in our relationships. We're not going to trust in the rulers, the government, and all of that. No, no, no. We're going to maintain our trust in the Lord and put hope in him. And not on those things that are fading, that are shifting, like the sand. You know the sand in the ocean? It's always forever shifting. You can never build anything on the sand. But you can build a solid house or home or a building on the rock of ages, who is Christ Jesus. So that's where we're going to maintain our faith and maintain our hope. He is the hope of glory. And this, you know, passage of scripture saying that the Lord is a fortified tower really speaks to the essence of who God is and that we can find the ultimate, uncontested, unrivaled security only in him. You know, I was telling a friend of mine that today's life we understand you know if you are in our country and other countries as well but i'm just saying you know crime is very rife we put all these high walls right and um uh, what do you call this electric fences and some of us have dogs i'm just making an example and then um we put alarm systems and some of them are so fancy that you can even access you know your your cctv from anywhere uh, where you may be across the world that still won't stop the thief from crime coming in to break in. You still have to pray. You're going to need divine protection in 2024. And that only comes about the God himself. When you pray over your house, pray that his consuming fire literally surrounds your home and those who are in it or those who are of your household. You pray over that vehicle, whether it's your company's vehicle or your own vehicle, your friend's vehicle, you pray over it. You plead the blood of Jesus over it. You pray over the food that you eat as you come out of that supermarket you put them in the house because you don't know what altars are built around those shops i'm just saying all those foods from where they are manufactured you bleed the blood of jesus over each and everything for god's protection divine protection because we don't know where everything comes from on this earth and what altars are set in those places where those things are being manufactured clothes included everything you you, you surrender everything every aspect of your life small or big um to the lord so in as much as we have all these worldly mechanisms to maintain some level of security so that we feel secure. It doesn't stop the thief. And Satan is like that. <laughs> He'll still try and come for you, although you've received the Holy Spirit. Nothing stopped him from coming to Christ when Christ was baptized with the Holy Spirit and the, the Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness. Stupid Satan still came after 40 days when Christ was amped up in the Spirit after spending 40 days footnotes praying and fasting. The damn Satan still came out trying to take so who are we? So he knows no bounds. But we have to remain, you know, in the position of knowing that God is our strong tower. So in as much as we have these mechanisms that speak to security, the real security is found in the Lord. He is our security. So you pray that his angels encamp you and that they encamp your tent. Right? The Bible says that in Psalm 91. 
so that no harm shall befall you and those who are around you we're gonna speak it and we're gonna sit on it and we're gonna walk this thing out so as much as we do all these things we're doing it sure but we we're not gonna put our hope in that alarm system we're not gonna put our hope in um that dog that you have as one that's gonna mitigate the situation should it arise we're not gonna put our hope in that we're not gonna put our hope in that electric fence or that wall we put our hope and trust in the lord for he is the strong tower he's the one that can have his heavenly army come in and take care of business because the war is really in the spiritual more than it is in the physical so that's where the shift needs to happen don't put your trust in things of this world put it in the lord and you will not be disappointed or turned away in dismay six point as we remind ourselves about the strength of the lord we will run and not grow weary we will run and not grow weary because we would have received the empowerment of the holy spirit by receiving the strength of the lord we'll be strengthened in the lord that's how we're going to know we're going to run and not grow weary isaiah 40 from 29 to 31 he gives strength he gives his strength not my strength or yours he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those those who hope in the lord jesus that's where our hope needs to be in the lord those who hope in the lord will renew their strength they will soar on wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak strength power the the youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall but those who hope in the lord so your hope is not in what's around you what's sitting in your bank account who says what to you it's it's in the lord but those who hope in the lord will renew their strength so your strength will forever be renewed so and it can only be renewed by the lord himself they will soar on wings like eagles and will run and not grow weary they will walk and not be faint seventh point the word of god reminds us that we are strengthened which pulls in this verse that i mentioned now strengthened and upheld by god's hand let us not forget the source of our strength he is the one who strengthens us and upholds us by his hand isaiah 41 9 to 10 i took you from the earth from the ends of the earth from its furthest corners i called you i said you are my servant i have chosen you and have not rejected you so do not fear for i am with you do not be dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you and help you is the holy spirit not our helper i will strengthen you and help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand thus says the lord the lord called you and he said you are my servant i have chosen you and have not rejected you so do not fear for the lord is with you christ emmanuel so you don't be dismayed for he is your god he says he will strengthen you and help you and uphold you in his righteous right hand he was speaking this words to israel because god cares for his people and god loves his children Many of us are always often under duress, just like the Israelites, you know, from foreign cultures and things of that nature. And people do really want to see us gone. Like, let me tell you, Christians are hated. Don't play with, don't even play with it. Christians are just generally hated, you know. And it's befitting because Christ was also hated too. So he tells you, he even told his disciples, don't be surprised when they hate you because they hated me first. So chill, comes with the territory. Although sometimes, you know, we still fall short of his glory. In fact, all the time, most of the time, we fall short of his glory, you know, from time to time of the Lord. He still calls us, he still strengthens us, and he still, uphold, he still upholds us just like he did um, the Israelites back in the day. Point number eight, we are to remind ourselves that in our moments of weakness, our strength is made perfect by the Lord in our weaknesses second corinthians 12 19 i love apostle Paul. he says but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness 
Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, because that's coming, in hardships, standard, in persecutions, standard, in difficulties, standard. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Because we, you have to understand that our strength lies in the Lord. He is the strength. He is our strength. Right? So hardships, insults, persecutions, difficulties, trials, tribulations come to the territory. But we're not going to be over overtook by those because of the one who lives, us, who lives in us. One, for greater is he who is in us than the one that's in the world. And that's how we're moving into 2024. So as you pray that tomorrow, let that saturate your spirit because that is the truth. And there's nothing anybody say, anybody can do about it or Satan for that matter. He drives he just make it i just want to strangle him <laughs> but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness therefore i will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that christ's power may rest on me ah, that is why for christ's sake i delight in weaknesses in insults and in hardships and persecutions in difficulty he finds delight in that for when he is weak when you and i we are weak we know that we are strong so some of us will go through some physical you know difficulties of whatsoever nature it doesn't matter what you're facing actually in 2024 because of the one who is in you god's power is going to be just demonstrated in your life and we're going to continue praying regularly we're going to continue praying without ceasing even if we might have a thorn in our flesh like apostle paul did he didn't stop praying he kept praying that's when the Lord made the revelation to him to say that my power is made perfect in your weakness. So no, I will not remove the thorn. How many of us still have thorns? One or two here and there. There might be some waiting for us in 2024. But as much as God will give you a thorn in your flesh, he'll still give you his strength so that you are able to bear it. By his strength, not your strength, his strength. Right? Thank you, Jesus. Point number nine, and I'm going to read the last one. This is 10 verses he has me sharing today the word of god the sword of the spirit be strong in the lord it's an instruction be strong in the lord and this is one of my most one of my favorite passages of scripture when we put on the full armor of god especially when we are in battle mode but you choose to do that every single day before you leave your house not only do you declare the promises of the lord for that day where you will remain in the joy of the lord throughout the day you put on that full armor of, of God in Ephesians 6 from 10 to I think it's 16 but I'm here I just got from Ephesians 6 from 10 to 11 where we are getting an instruction right through the Holy Spirit using Apostle Paul's mouth to say that finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power not my power not yours his mighty power not our friends not spouses be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on wear it to put on is to wear something, so you decide to put it on. So you put it on in the morning, you put it on at night over your children too. Yeah, cats and dogs, everybody. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Because the devil is not about to go on a holiday. But when you have the armor of God, you can take a stand. And after all is said and done, to still stand. The helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, you tighten the belt of truth, you put on the shoes of the gospel of peace, you raise the shield of faith, you draw the sword of the spirit, and you bind it all in prayer, in the mighty name of Jesus. That's how we're rolling, coming into 2024, because we are going to remain strong in the Lord. It's all about action. It's all about action. I'm super excited to see what the Lord is going to be doing in 2024. Because our Christian lives, we're not supposed to lead lives that are mediocre. Because God is using my life and yours as a ministry so he can reveal himself or his heart to others. So he, we are supposed to be vessels. So when you say yes to Christ, know that everything that Christ faced is coming standard in your life. Because lest we forget, Satan is our enemy and he hates Christians, like those who are really in Christ Jesus, whose hearts have been circumcised, who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And he's always looking for ways to try and take us out, right? 
try and entice us to come out all unfaithful to God, which is to ultimately destroy us. So if he can disconnect you from the Lord with his lies and schemes and plots and deception, that's all he wants, just to temper with your faith. If you look at everything and take a moment to really reflect, you will see his pattern is the same. He's so stupid, he does everything the same, right? He hasn't changed his schemes from way back when. He still does it today. It's just that he's a little bit more tech savvy and advanced here and there. So he thinks, but we see right through him, right? Because of the spirit whom we carry. Those temptations, he's still on them. He hasn't changed one bit. It's just he got more desperate now. But his key thing is to try and get us to be unfaithful to God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And Satan knows that. And with the faith he's talking about, it's the bearing testament or witness to Christ Jesus as the son of the God whom we serve, who is in heavenly places. He wants to uproot you from your faith and have you abandon your faith so that he can gain access and wreak havoc in your life. So he uses circumstances and he walks through people sometimes to try and get to that. Oh, did you really hear from the Lord? Oh, but look at you. You just gave your life to Jesus, but your life is a mess. Lies. God is using everything in the lives of those whom he has called according to his purpose for, his, for their own good and for his glory, period. That hasn't changed. Don't let the, the devil come and make you jump stupid and do things that are not of the Lord because he's a liar. So we are going to move from the strength of the Lord. The last verse, the Bible reminds us that we can do all things, obviously, through Christ who gives us strength. So through him, we are strengthened. Philippians 4, 11 to 13. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. Contentment. He has learned to be joyous. Regardless of his circumstances, this is Apostle Paul, excuse me. I know what is to be in need and I know what is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. This is one of the popular verses, you know. And you know, when we really take a moment to reflect on Apostle Paul's ministry, we understand that um, he faced a lot of persecution. You know, he underwent a couple of shipwrecks and he went, underwent betrayal as well. And uh, I guess it was throughout that time that he actually learned the secret of contentment and brought that verse to life. This is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it, regardless of what's happening around me. Right, I'm just adding that bit, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, regardless of the troubles, regardless of the persecutions, regardless of the mockery, regardless of the attacks, regardless of the trials, regardless of the um, difficulties, hardships, challenges, regardless of it, he remained content. Whether in plenty or in need, we have to learn also, as Apostle Paul did, to be fulfilled. In the Lord, for men cannot live by bread alone, but by the word of God. And that is where the secret is. Don't let Satan have you occupied with things that the Lord has already taken care of. We are going to be in hot pursuit for the kingdom of God and its righteousness. So that all those things could be added unto us. It's all about obedience, fam. Christ is the one that's going to give you the strength into 2024 in that which you might be facing. Whatever challenges, obstacles, attacks, I don't care what it is. You are going to pull through and you declare it now. We decree it now. Tomorrow when you pray, you speak it. You speak it by faith. For as Galatians reminds us, Apostle Paul continues to say, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But the Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. The very thing that Satan tries to attack or take away from us or separate us from is the faith in Christ. He says, I live by faith in the Son of God, the deity of Jesus, who loved me and gave himself for me. That is the crux of Christianity. And that is what Satan is coming for. Because he knows outside of Christ, we can do nothing and we are nothing. 
So no Satan. We that's how that's not how we're moving. And he's gonna come in hot, but we're gonna come out hotter and put him in his place. That's how we're moving from a place of strength in the Lord, power in the Lord. That's how we're rolling. 2024. 2024. We're gonna show him flames. <laughs> That's what we're supposed to do. As the Lord lights us up, we light him up. Satan, that is. As the Lord lights us, shine, lights us, as he says, our light has come, we're gonna rise and shine, right? And, and, and his glory rises upon us. We set Satan alight. That's just how we're rolling. Just take him out. That's what it is. He's already dead anyway. He's already gone gone. So you might as well just, you know, whatever. <laughs> like the enemy like i really don't um all right cool let's let's have a moment then i hope you have your elements ready fam i want to pray over mine and then let's have holy communion and then i'll close the session um and then i'll, do, I'll give you evening morning or afternoon back to you all right i'm joined my one of my daughters here so she's gonna partake are you ready with your elements with that all right cool so she's watching mommy today because yeah Gotta teach this little ones about the ways of the Lord from time to time, you know. Yeah. Holidays are not only about Christian movies and interesting programs. It's about also spending time with our loved ones and imparting the knowledge that we have in the Lord. All right. So I have my, as you know, I love my milk. I have my bread. So this represents Christ's blood, my faith. So religious people don't even, I'm not the one. Then this is the bread. All right, cool. I've had to explain this to the girls in the best way I knew. I was like, Holy Spirit, help me explain when I say this is the blood and this is the bread because this is the body because they've been me like, Mom, what are you talking about? I love for the Lord to lead you, you know, and to help you um, minister to the little ones so that they are able to understand and uh, pray first that, you know, their heart is receptive and then he opens the spirit, their spiritual eyes and ears to receive and to see what you are talking about. All right, so let's just partake of the Holy Communion in remembrance of, of, of Christ Jesus and uh, what he did for us at the, the cross of Calvary when he shed his precious blood so that you and I may have eternal life um, and always be in the presence of the Lord. So Heavenly Father, we pray over this Holy Communion, Lord. Thank you, Christ Jesus. Thank you for being obedient to the point of death. Thank you for, for, for the forgiveness of sins, Lord so that we may be reconciled back unto the Father. Thank you, Lord, that your love sustains us, sustained us then, it continues to sustain us today, and it will sustain us tomorrow. Thank you that we've been made a new creation in you. For your word says, whomsoever believes that you are the Son of God, that you died by crucifixion, and you were risen by the Spirit of God after three days, and you are now on the right hand side of the Father. And that you died, you shed your precious, precious blood so that our sins may be forgiven, shall be saved. It is by our heart that we believe, and with our mouth we confess that Jesus is Lord. So thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for that which you are going to be doing in 2024. Thank you for the good works that you've prepared for us to do in 2024. We pray for your strength. We pray for your guidance, Lord. You are our fortress. Help us to remember who we are and whose we are. To know that we run to you as our deliverer, as our stronghold, Lord, as our defender, as our form of defense. For you've taught us to be still and know that you are God. Help us remember that in our times of weakness, Lord, you are our strength. And that we can do all things through you, Christ Jesus, for it is by your strength. Help us remember that you are the one who dwells in us. For you are greater and greater is he who is in us than the one that's in the world help us not to remember christ jesus that you have overcome the world and that you have defeated satan and on the on the day you were on calvary you made a spectacle of him so it's by confidence in the truth that we know who lives in us by your spirit that it is finished may we not grow weary or tired lord god but to call upon you for strength call upon you for guidance and through the help of the holy spirit know that we are not orphans you didn't leave us alone christ jesus you brought the father brought down a helper for us in your name so that we are able to continue to occupy and to move forward 
through hardships, Lord, the ones that we've experienced before, we thank you for putting us through, and those that are still going to come. We know that your glory has risen upon your children, and that we, our light has come, Lord God, so we're going to move in the confidence that we have in you, Christ. And what your word says, for it is true, it is alive as you are alive, and it is active as you are too. So help us to maintain your peace that surpasses all understanding and for, to move from a place of strength. So as we take or partake of this Holy Communion, Lord, may you saturate us with your presence and may your word take root in our spirit and become active and alive so that our actions follow suit that which you've spoken to us from the, from the beginning of time and bring into remembrance everything that you've taught us. And I pray all of this in the mighty and matchless name of Christ Jesus. Amen. So as we partake um, of Holy Communion, we're going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 26, from 26 to 27. It says, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread. Take your bread, please, sweetheart. Thank you. Took the bread and broke it. So he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take Take and eat, this is my body. So this is the body of the Lord. Read me spiritually, okay? This is in remembrance of the finished work of the cross. The disciples, for most of us, some of us who don't know, uh, partook of the Holy Communion with Christ Jesus during their last supper before he faced crucifixion. The body of Christ, we remember it because he absorbed my sin and yours. It was bruised. For my sin and yours and for our transgressions as the book of Isaiah says it was broken for me and you then he took the cup gave thanks and offered it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins so thank you Lord Jesus that you poured your precious blood on the cross of Calvary, so that my sin and that of my brothers and sisters may be forgiven. Let us partake. And yes, I love milk. <laughs> I always say that, but milk tastes like, I don't know. It's amazing. Thank you, Lord, for the milk. Thank you for the cows. Thank you for the milk. All right, so... Um, I'm going to just close off in prayer, fam. I trust that you are richly blessed by the word today and that you are encouraged. I remember that God is for you and is not against you. So don't let the enemy come lie and sing things to your ears which are not of the Lord. We're going to speak the word and we're going to um, be doers of the word. So thank you so much for joining the, the teaching this, this afternoon. Um, Tomorrow is the 28th, and we are going to be sitting on the passage of scriptures that I um, mentioned, but please be led of the Spirit of the Lord as well. Firstly, find out if you should be fasting with us, and secondly, how that fast looks like for you. It should be Daniel or Esther, but really, be led of the Spirit of God. On the 28th, no, that's the 28th tomorrow, that is the God's strength that we're mentioning today. And then on the 29th, so when I come in tomorrow, I will be touching on God's peace. Um, I'm going to pray or, or, or touch on scriptures that speaks to us making a request for God's peace to heal and fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and our spirits. So that one I will share with us tomorrow as we prepare for the day to pray, to call upon the peace of God. Um, to touch those areas of our heart of our minds because really our bodies are a temple of the Lord and we're going to be cleaning house because <laughs> God is doing divine reversals also mind body spirit soul so we're gonna we're gonna just be yeah speaking the word praying over our own bodies that of our children praying over our spouses family members everybody that's what we're gonna be doing tomorrow so that then we fast about it on the day after up until we finish on the 2nd of January. So thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, for being part of the teaching. I trust that the God of glory will richly bless you as you remain in this word, as you make sure that you meditate in this word, because meditating on this word, studying this word, but also doing what it says will lead many of us and all of us that do so in spirit 
and um, in truth to prosper and succeed in everything that we do. So do not deviate from the commands, precepts and decrees and the statutes of the Lord. Um, do not turn to the left, to the right, but rather uphold them day and night and continue to be strong and courageous in the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. I was paraphrasing Joshua 1.8, but meditate on that as well and know that God is for you and he's not against you. Many of us are going to be possessing the, the land, the promises that the Lord has for us, taking us into places that we are unfam unfamiliar with, but it's all for his glory. But we got to move in there strong. So even if you meet opposition, remain strong in the Lord. Remain strong in the Lord. Take cover in the Lord. You know, remain strong in the Lord. He will not let you down. Place your hope in the Lord. Maintain your faith in the Lord and stand and after all is said and done stand and maintain your position and god always comes through always comes through he doesn't bring you to a point only to let you down no he brings you to a point so that his glory may be made public and that his glory may be revealed to those who are lo looking searching seeking or perhaps even doubting so be used of the lord and yes you're gonna feel used but then it's better to be used by the lord than by to become enslaved by the world can i get an amen i'll rather be used by the lord and be a born servant of the lord than to be a slave to sin be a slave to the flesh and the things of this world in the mighty name of jesus so remain blessed until we meet again fam as the Lord permits, he's, he said seven and eight or what, but then we flow. Okay. So obedience to God is everything. So thank you so much for being a part of the teaching. May the God of glory bless you and please be safe as you are moving about. Make sure that you pray in your coming and pray in your going and cover your children, especially Satan is coming for our kids and we're going to take a stand and say no, no more. No, these are not your children. These children, the children belong to the Lord, dedicated unto the Lord. You're not having them. Sorry, Satan. You're not having our families. You're not having our jobs. You're having nothing because you have nothing anyway. So no, you're not going to be killing and stealing and destroying over here. Here, we don't do that. Here, we're going to do the will of the Father. And that is what's going to prevail in my life and yours in the mighty name of Jesus. So thank you, my brothers and sisters. We will be in touch again tomorrow. Remain blessed.